Hi guys, this is Akhil and uh, today I would be covering up the concept of cloud computing architecture. But before that, I would request you guys to subscribe our video channel. Along with that, you can like our video. You can find the details uh, just below our video. Now let's look into what we have uh, for today's session. So today we would be covering up why we require cloud computing. Uh, what is cloud computing technology? Uh, what are the benefits of cloud computing? And uh, the two main architecture pillars of cloud computing. Along with that, the components of the cloud computing technology. Now, why do we require cloud computing? Let's look into it. So earlier what was happening, before the cloud computing technology, uh, the organizations were facing some challenges. Challenges in terms of on-prem infrastructure. So on-prem infrastructure, on-prem setup is expensive. Uh, it is less scalable um, because you have already procured the infrastructure so the scalability becomes uh, lower along with that they require a lot of huge space for the servers if in case you have lost data in the on-prem it becomes uh, difficult to recover them along with that it takes long deployment times apart from that the other challenges were the lack of flexibility poor data security less collaboration with the inter-infrastructure and the data cannot be accessed remotely. Though data can be accessed remotely, but uh, there were some challenges in terms of the security. Now, all these challenges uh, were basically overcome when the cloud computing technology was introduced. So before cloud computing, uh, managing files on a local storage was also difficult, but with the introduction of cloud computing, what we got, we saw that there is no server space required. So nothing needs to be set up in the on-prem infrastructure. No experts required for hardware and software maintenance because that would be done by the cloud computing vendor itself. It gave better data security and the disaster recovery setup is fantastic in terms of the cloud computing technology. Along with that, uh, ease of deployment, uh, the deployment activities become are easier in terms of setting up on the cloud computing platforms. Uh, it is cost effective. You pay as you go. There are on-demand services. Uh, management of services easy as well as uh, the collaboration is also efficient. So cloud computing is uh, generally better than the on-prem infrastructure because of so many advantages it has. Now we have seen the advantages of the cloud computing, why the organizations opt for the cloud computing, but what is actually the cloud computing technology is. So cloud computing is basically the delivery of on-demand resources. So anything which you need that is available. So such as server, database, software, and they are accessible over the internet. So here in the diagram, you can see that a computer or desktop can access any uh, service over the internet. So it's basically related to server database and the softwares. It also gives the ability to build, design and manage applications on the cloud platform. Now you just have to note that companies offering these computing services are called as the cloud providers. So like AWS, Google Cloud, these are all the cloud providers. The cloud computing service providers are called as the vendors. They provide services to manage the applications through a global infrastructure or a global network. Some of the examples, as I mentioned, AWS, Microsoft Azure, as well as Google Cloud. So these are the three primary cloud providers in the market. Let's look into what are the benefits of using the cloud computing. It is easily upgraded. Sometimes the upgrades are managed by the vendor itself. So there are no hassles in terms of uh, doing the upgrades. It is cost efficient since these are on demand services. So you pay as you use or you pay as you go. The scalability is almost, you can say unlimited, depends on the setup or the infrastructure of a cloud vendor. And you can scale as much as you require. And it provides you a lot of services where you can do the automation so you can basically create your applications and you can automate them you can even deploy your application using the automation 
it is highly available the reason is that they have a redundant infrastructure so you can create or deploy your applications which will be highly available flexible so you can shift between the services you can shift between the infrastructure whenever you need along with that it gives you the better security in terms of managing your applications along with the databases and you can do the customization as per your requirement now let's understand what do we mean by the cloud computing architecture so this diagram represents the cloud computing architecture where you can see there is a cloud infrastructure which we call as a front end front end means the infrastructure that is network facing that is internet facing and the back end is where actually the application the services and the devices are like storage servers and all along with the management and the security portals so primarily the cloud computing architecture has two components one is the front end and the other one is the back end now with respect to the architecture the cloud computing is architecture as we discussed earlier is divided into two parts front end and the back end it provides applications and the interfaces that are required for the cloud based services so front end would be anything which is facing the internet for example the websites that you deploy they are front end because they are accessed by the public over the public network these applications basically such as web browser google chrome and internet explorer over which you can basically open up your web applications your websites and also it includes client and mobile devices along with uh, some apis so this is with respect to the front end architecture now let's look into the further more concepts related to the front end so in the front end the cloud infrastructure consists of a hardware and the software components that includes a data storage server virtualization software etc also it provides the gui or we call it as a graphical user interface to the end users so that they can perform the respective task so it's a gui based access and those who are not from the coding background or they don't have uh, familiarity with the cli it is an advantage now let's understand the back end architecture so the back end is basically it manages all the programs that runs the application on the front end so whatever is required to support the applications for example web applications which are running on a front end would be available in the back end it has the larger number of data storage systems and server so it is basically it comprises of the entire infrastructure of a cloud provider and it can also be a software or it can be a platform as well so based on the requirement the application provides output to the end users in the back end also it is one of the most important components in the cloud because it is you can say a backbone of a cloud computing architecture and its task is to provide utility in the architecture and the few services that are widely used among the end users are storage application development environments and the web services in the back end with respect to the storage it maintains and manages any time of any amount of data over the internet some of the examples of storage services on the cloud are s3 which is called as a simple storage service oracle cloud storage and microsoft azure storage Uh, the storage capacity varies depending upon the service providers available in the market and also it allocates specific resources to a specific task it handles functions of cloud environment so this is with respect to the management in the back end architecture the management in the back end architecture helps in the management of components like applications task service security data storage and the cloud infrastructure and in simple terms it establishes coordination among the resources coming to the security aspect of a back end architecture it is an integral part of a cloud infrastructure because uh, since you it mostly relies on the storage and the databases so it has to be more secure it helps in protecting cloud resources system files and the infrastructures also it provides security to the cloud servers with virtual firewalls and results in the prevention data loss now the different components of the cloud computing architecture one is the hypervisor 
second is the management software the third one is the deployment software fourth one is the network fifth one is the cloud server and you have the cloud storage now let's look into what we have with the hypervisor hypervisor as the name suggests is a virtual operating platform and that is basically used by every user uh, it runs a separate virtual machine on the back end which consists of a software and the hardware also it maintain objective its main objective is to divide and allocate resources so basically the hypervisor is primarily used to virtualize the physical machines so that it can be shared across with many resources or many users the management software its responsibility is to manage and monitor the cloud operations so all the operational tasks are basically done by the management software it helps in improving the performance of the cloud since uh, you can do the admin task as well for example high security flexibility full time access and the access given to other uh, users who would be working on the cloud platform the deployment software consists of all the mandatory installations and configurations that are required to run a cloud service every deployment of cloud service is performed using a deployment software so it is primarily used for deploying the applications or a software so that basically saves the time of a developer in terms of deploying the codes now the three different models which can be deployed are the software as a service which we call as a saas so the software as a service means uh, it, it hosts the software and manage the application of the end user example is gmail so gmail is an example of a saas service where it acts as a mailing service and uh, the users just have to create their email accounts and start using the service uh, the pass is basically a platform as a service and uh, it helps uh, to develop and build and deploy the applications on the software primarily used by the coders uh, they can mo concentrate more on their development activities and less focus on the infrastructure part example is microsoft azure and uh, the infrastructure as a service ias is basically to provide services on pay as you go pricing model uh, coming to the component of a cloud computing architecture that is network so what is with respect to network why do we need a network so it connects the front end and the back end together so the network can be the internal private network of a cloud computing provider as well as the public network and also it allows every user to access the cloud resources over the internet uh, it helps users to connect and customize the route and protocol so let's say an admin wants um, a particular ips to be blocked so you can specify them and customize them in the route and the protocols uh, it is a virtual server which is hosted on the cloud computing architecture so it is just like a virtual uh networking that is available on the cloud computing platform it is highly flexible secure and cost effective and it is uh, basically uh you can say the backbone in terms of connecting multiple services together the cloud storage is basically where every data is stored and that can be accessed by a user from anywhere over the internet of course it depends on how do you provide the access to it it is scalable at runtime and it is automatically accessed and the data can be modified and retrieved from the cloud storage over the internet itself so this was about our session for today guys uh, thank you for watching this video i hope uh, you like it Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.